Today I'm gonna challenge myself painting a space marine in the heavy metal style, which is a style I'm not too keen on. Oh boy, this is bad. <laughs> First thing, I'm gonna make a simple cork base, making it look like asphalt by breaking it down and gluing it back together. And I will also clean up the edges and use some milliput to, you know, make it clean. While I take care of the bases, before I start painting, I want to analyze the heavy metal style for a sec. As you can see, we have our well-known sharp edge highlights, but we also have some interesting shading here. The shadow is barely perceptible, but, it, but it's there, I swear. Yeah, let's start painting, keeping these things in mind. I will start base coating all the armor in yellow, then I will do the black parts and also the leather parts. For the yellow you can use Avalon Sunset, but here I'm just using Ochre from AK Interactive because, well, it's just better. I will apply it pretty thinly in order to make it very smooth as the heavy metal style implies. As you can see, this miniature comes from another project I did and so that's why it's like this. Um, <laughs> anyway, where the paint is too translucent, I will apply a second coat so it's perfectly opaque. And also sorry for the voice, I'm having a bad cold and this screwed up Monte San Savino for me, but <laughs> who cares, right? <laughs> I do the same thing with the black being really, really careful not to hit any of the yellow part. But don't worry, I did it. <laughs> so don't worry if you will too. But here the paint is actually a little bit thicker than the yellow because it's black. And I want it that way. With a pale gray from AK Interactive, I take care of the helmet and the purity seals paper. And finally, I take care of the chest eagle using this violetly red. Here I just used some colors that I had already on my palette, mixed a little bit of red with blue, I think. And I got this color. And lastly, I forgot, also Rhinox hide on the leather parts. I have to be honest here and say that base coating everything in that, you know, that clean manner uh, that uh, heavy metal style calls for, it was very relaxing. So points to the heavy metal style. Uh, now I just have to avoid messing everything up with the shading. Because as, as we saw in the references, the heavy metal team shade in a very, very simplistic and, you know, almost unperceptible way. So will I be able to do that? I then start the shading process using contrast paints because I don't know, I felt like it. I use mostly Nasdrek, Nas, Nasdrek, Nasdrek yellow and Wildwood. I start with a very controlled recess shading. And as you can see here is very neat and clean. And I was really happy of what I was seeing on the miniature. Then I, I started the glazing phase in order to give that subtle shade that the heavy metal style has. And what could possibly go wrong with that? Messing everything up with the shading. Messing everything up with the shading. I have to say that I never used contrast paint for glazing and they're pretty good at it, I have to be honest. The only con is that on the wet palette they tend to become like jelly or something like this and it's pretty annoying. In the deepest shadows I used Wildwood mixed to not yellow in order to give more contrast which in retrospect was it even needed i don't think so oh no this is getting this is getting out of control this is getting out of hand already oh my god i already think that i went out of the heavy metal style you know because it's so hard to break habits and paint in a different way and i think i'm I'm pushing slightly more the, the shadows than I was supposed to. It doesn't look bad, does it? It doesn't look heavy metal. <sighs> I am gonna try to fix this by hedge highlighting like a true member of the heavy metal team. I mixed my base coat yellow with this very pale yellow and started applying it all over the edges. This was kind of of a bad start because in the shadows this color was way too bright. I ended up doing a back and forth between the base color yellow and uh, base color mixed with the other very pale yellow without actually mentioning how f hard was for me to get a straight line. <sighs> I 
I then went in with this pure pale yellow at some point, but honestly, I was feeling pretty defeated because it was so hard to paint a straight line. Guys. Ow! Oh, ow! Oh, ah! Oh. I know, Well, that went bad. I already have a hard time dealing with precision stuff because I'm, because I'm sloppy, basically. But also having the camera here and not being able to put my head under the mini and very near to the mini, it's, it, it, it's hell. <sighs> but I keep going anyway, layering with off-white the helmet leaving the recesses gray. I then highlight with pure white, doing some hedge like as well with the same amount of difficulty. Do the same thing for the eagle, adding some white to create a kind of an off pink and I layer it up in a very careful and clean manner, as much as I tried at least. As far as the black parts were concerned, so the cloth and the other parts of the armor, I actually managed to be a little bit more precise. I started with ashing gray for the first layer and then I layered up with the same pale gray that I used for the base coat of the helmet as a final highlight. Like I said before, getting thin lines while filming is hard. But here I have to admit, I succeeded more than I was expecting at this point. <laughs> Which it was nothing. I wasn't expecting anything from myself, really. You're a disappointment, Alice. Last but not least, I do the leather parts, always adding some white and a little bit of yellow to the color so I can, you know, give it a little bit of saturation and increase the value. I think I'm gonna move on to the decals and to the other details. Give it a little bit of matte varnish before doing the metal details and I'm gonna call it done. And I then took care of the decals and the metallic parts and then I was pretty much done. I don't, I don't actually know if I can tell myself that I passed this challenge. The truth is I'm really not that good with that kind of painting. Regardless of that, I think it was an enriching experience and it was relaxing for the first part, not so much in the other part, but it was fun anyway. Even though I was going crazy, it was fun for me. So I, I'd like to push you to do something out of your comfort zone because even though it's it's hard to do and might be enriching at the end. So do it. What are you waiting for? Just don't watch me suffer. You suffer a little bit as well, okay?